Hello boys and girls, how's it going? Um, been quite an eventful week actually down at the plot. I don't know if any of you have seen my previous videos where I've been complaining about how few people there are down here. Yeah, I think the council have been withholding plots this year, um, basically down to the Covid, which is understandable. But just uh, in the last week, they did some viewings and we've had four of the plots taken up. Four. So that's more than doubled the amount of people down here on the plot now. So it's gone from just three of us down here. Uh, and there's seven now, so hopefully uh, a few of the new ones will stick. Because you always get people that come down for a new plot, take a look at it, have a go for a couple of weeks and then give it up. But uh, hopefully a few of these will stick and we can get a bit of a... Uh, a community thing going on. It does lead me to uh, my next little job actually, which is uh, this pathway here and this pathway here. Now I'm under no obligation to sort anything out other than my own hedgerow, which is uh, this one. But, you know, because I'm that kind of guy, I'm going to have a go, try and clear the whole thing. So I think one of the chaps has got some limited mobility, so it would be nice if he can get his car right up to his plot, which he can't at the minute. So if I can sort that out, that'll be uh, blinding. It might help him, uh, you know, get through it, stick at it a bit. But um, yeah, heck of a job, because <laughs> going up this back end here as well, if you can see, sort of walking backwards here, I'll probably get a garden spider web in my face. We've seen them at this time of year, the old web um, orb spiders, orb, orb weaver spiders. The females at this time of year, the bums are looking really, really big. Probably not the bum, is it the abdomen or the thorax or something like that? But yeah, it's all full of eggs at the minute and they're all getting ready to breed. They're on these massive webs, they're really conspicuous. Um, I think I just digressed a little bit, but yeah, they're everywhere, aren't they? You sort of walk through a doorway and you've got one plastered to your face. It's no, uh, no fun at all and they are, you know, they're a decent size. So um, anyway, <laughs> so let me have a look down here. So yeah, this is, uh, I've cut the grass. I've got all of these hedgeways to sort of trim back a little bit because one of the guys has actually taken the plot down at the bottom there. Um, good luck, I don't know how they could even get down there to view it. But technically this back hedge is all mine as well. So as you can see it's, uh, what we're going to say, sort of 12-15 foot. So yeah, I'm going to have a, a bit of a tidy up down there as well. It should take me a good few hours. But uh, I find myself with time on my hands, luckily, and I've got a petrol streamer. That, I might have said before, is actually a plot. It's a plot that's uh, never going to be, though, because uh, that's the ground level. That's probably four foot high with rubbish. As you can see, there's all sorts in there, car tyres and asbestos. Just general detritus and rubbish. Um, so yeah, that's, that's never going to get cleared. It's not going to be financially viable for anybody to do that, a council especially. Um, they've got a lot better things to be spending their money on, like looking after the community. So I can understand that one. But yeah, I'm going to have a, a go at these hedges. Interesting stuff. Hedge cut 2020. <laughs> anyway. Got to have a laugh, ain't you? Here's a plot in general. It's looking all plotty and slightly overgrown. Very impressed with some of these beautiful dahlias that continue to flower well into September. My marigolds as well. Uh, look at those, beautiful. I've got one of my sprout plants here. You have to excuse the weeds and everything else, you know what I'm like. But yeah, one of my sprout plants is coming on quite well. I could even, uh, if I needed a handful of nobbies, I could actually get them off now. And don't forget your sprout tops as well, lovely. Don't uh, ignore them, don't leave them. Absolutely beautiful, just like a cabbage. Ooh. That was me falling over. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's, that's my job for, for today. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. It's Friday the 18th of September. I'm officially 40 tomorrow, so happy birthday to me. Um, can't guarantee I'll be down here over the weekend, you know how it is. I may have a little, uh, a little drinky, you know, but um, it's got to be done, hasn't it? The recovery time gets a bit longer as you get older, but uh, hey ho. Hello. Right. Obviously, I'm going to be using this beast today, the old petrol strimmer. Um, any tool that you use, you want to be using the correct PPE, personal protective equipment. So that's anything that protects you from injury whilst you're working. So I've got the old uh, ear defenders here, protect my ears because the engine's very, very loud. 
I've got myself some lovely little gloves uh, which have been in my shed so I'll be checking them out for earwigs and spiders and didgeridoos and all the rest of it and um, eye protection as well because you know one little chip flying up into your eye you can do yourself some serious injury so just safeguard yourself I know it's uh, you know tempting just to pick up a tool and start working with it but uh, one little injury you can either ruin your day or it can ruin your life so uh, keep safe with petrol as well um, obviously that stuff's uh, fairly flammable so don't sit there with a fag on or you know doing it anywhere you know you don't need to be told this stuff um, but one one important tip I did pick up is uh, when you're refueling um, you've got to mix your fuel with uh, oil so where you're doing your mixing and filling up and everything like that then move the tool once you've you know sealed your tank otherwise there could be petrol lying around when you spark up it could go up so um, that's just one little thing anyway this has been a public service safety announcement by allotment gardener with trains protecting you keeping the community safe 2020 <laughs>Clean up is continuing in earnest, uh, he's a good lad. Um, so, what I've done is I've uh, cleared out this bed next to me now, and I'm going to have a look at digging up the spuds there. Now, the spuds have grown, all the foliage has died back, and I've completely ignored them, which is you know, it's okay, it's a spud, it will live in the ground as long as you've not got any wire worm or excessive blight or anything, should be absolutely fine. Um, not feeling great today actually this is a couple of days after my little hedge cutting so um, a bit of headache I feel a bit rough nothing to do with my birthday and excessive amounts of uh, solar pop uh, honest so um, yeah I'm just gonna have a little dig around now see if we can find any spuds if we can that would be spud tastic spud come on give me a good spud pun uh, potato spud me like spud tastic absolutely Roasting. No, I can't think of one. Anyway, spuds now. Whew, boom! And here we go. This is the little area that I was on about. You can kind of still see the two little ridges there, and there's a potato and a few other bits and bobs in there. But I'm going to have a good rummage around, see what we can find. It's going to be epic. Whoa. It's a potato! It's one potato! Right, I'm going to do it properly. It's a potato! 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 It's a little potato! It's a potato! It's a potato! It's a potato! It's a potato! <gasps> it's a potato! It's a potato! You could notice a theme here at all, people. And there we go. Not uh, too bad, size of them. Look nice and clean as well, no wire worm, no scab or anything like that. That's more luck than uh, anything else. You know, nice decent jacket sized potatoes in there. What happy? I've got that many. So I'm not up no, uh, I'm not upset with that at all. Don't know what there is there, five kilo or something. So yeah, well happy with that. Uh, decent harvest spuds like this one with no diseases on them or wire worm or anything like that you can leave them in the ground you know right through winter if you want lift them as you need them it's a big thing about Christmas spuds at the minute which I'm not a big believer in because here in Nottingham you can't grow spuds in autumn and winter it's too cold it's too dark so I don't know it sounds more like a corporate thing hey let's sell more potato seeds um, I see so many failed images of people trying to grow 
potatoes by planting them at this time of year. Just doesn't seem to work. You might get away with it in a greenhouse if you've got some heating. Um, but even a you know first early or something needs 10, 12 weeks. So you know that takes you right into December. It's it's your potatoes aren't going to grow. They're tropical. They come from Peru. Um, soil temperature of anything less than about 10 degrees and they go completely dormant anyway so foliage certainly isn't frost friendly. I'm going on a bit anyway so these ones here I'm just going to leave them out as they are and that for me you know that'll probably feed me for God, the amount that I eat three weeks something like that um, so I can dig up the other row and that'll take me right through um, so yeah absolutely lovely I'll leave them to dry off anyway in the open air in the sunshine here um, and I'm going to put them in this hessian sack here. I'm going to use hessian because it's breathable. It's not going to be like plastic where the potatoes are going to sit and sweat and uh, go rotten. So use something breathable. Um, hessian sack, paper sack. Go to your local chip shop. Say, yo mate, can I have one of your empty potato bags? And they'll give you one of these big paper bags. Use them. Um, you don't even have to say it like that. You can use a normal voice if you want. That's absolutely fine. Right, guys. I think it's about time that we take this big sunflower down now. It's... Uh... It's about at it now and uh, I want to cut it down before it falls down because it's getting quite windy at the minute. So, yes, I think autumn is definitely here now. 25th of September now, a couple of days after the start of the video. Just like mangling it all together, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm going to take this big boy down, check how big my head is. was a bit of a beast. Now I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to compost everything, cut the leaves off, stick them in my compost, even the stem. That thing's going to be absolutely rock solid though so I'll split that to expose the core, help it rot down a bit. Um, I'll take that head off as well, have a look at that. And here's the beast close up. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, absolute beast. Beast. Of course, you rub those bits and you can see all the seeds hiding behind. Ta da! Yeah, it's very nice, that. Um, I love growing sunflowers, don't know why. Um, just something about them. Like, see, some flowers are tiny and little, and then you get some flowers that are uh, quite, 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 quite big. Mm. Does leave me uh, with this thing now, though, the stem. Like I say, as you can see, it's got a bit of a hollow core. So if I split that down and then chop it into little pieces, hopefully, that'll all rot and compost down. Um, superb, superb. And if I could try pole vaulting with it. Yes! Not the most spectacular, was it? But uh, I enjoyed it. You might wonder why I've done that, it's just literally split it in half, increase the surface area, it's obviously got a hard outer shell that'll just help it break down a bit quicker in the old compost. So that's a good thing. Um, see you later.